Hey math people, let's T-A-L-K some S-A-T. Talk uh, S-A-T is what that, that was supposed to be. Let's talk about the S-A-T. So on the S-A-T, there are, uh, there are a lot of problems and there is not a lot of time. I figured I wanted to do is I wanted to show you how to find shortcuts on the S-A-T. So it is critical to find shortcuts on the S-A-T if you want to make sure you finish every single problem uh, with integrity and with uh, full honest effort. So the SAT was intentionally designed to uh, be kind of kind of cumbersome when it comes to number of problems per minute. And if you spend too much time on one problem, you're not gonna have a whole heck of a lot of time left for some others. So if you spend like four or five minutes on what the SAT considers a medium level difficulty problem, you are maybe possibly unlikely to finish uh, it's, you know, underneath the conditions of actually trying on every single problem. That's what I mean by finish. Of course, you can obviously just bubble random things towards the end, uh, but I, I mean like actually, actually finish. So what I'm going to do for you today is help you find some shortcuts, allowing you to save some time on maybe some of the easy to mid-tier difficulty problems, and that will give you more time on the harder ones towards the end of the SAT. General tip. Usually some of the earlier questions are easier than the later ones uh, for both the multiple choice and the free response. So for the portion that is multiple choice, the first few questions are a little bit easier and then the portion that is the free response, maybe the first question or two is easier. And this is true for both the calculator and non-calculator because they both have a multiple choice and free response. So anyways, as, as you can see here, I am on the SAT uh, the official SAT page, collegereadiness.collegeboard.org slash SAT slash practice slash full length practice test. Uh, so if you wanted to go onto that page, uh, you can see what I see. And what I see is a lot of tests, a lot of practice tests, eight to be exact. Now there's, there's, a, there's a page on SAT practice test one that is perfect for what I want to show you. Um, so if you wanted to look at this with me, I would be that SAT practice test one, um, you just, well first off you just hit see all, you go to practice test one, you click it, you scroll through all the boring English because that's not what I'm about, and then actually if you get down to page, uh, page 38, uh, it's questions number five, six, and seven on the non-calc. These questions are great questions uh, to use uh, as vessels to show you how to search for shortcuts. All right, let's do some math. Uh, so the very first problem, uh, which of the following is equivalent to the expression above? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Just saying to simplify this thing. So my uh, first piece of advice for finding a shortcut is to work off the answers. Work off the answers. Obviously, one of those things, one of these choices over here is the answer, so work off them. Uh, you're given this extra data and it's kind of there to help you in some ways. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this problem-ish, sort of, um, with the answers in mind. Right off the bat, when I look at these answers, I notice that um, these two, C and D, have two x squared y's and A and B, well, they don't. So the first thing I'm going to look for is whether it has two x squared y's or not. So when I simplify this expression, I of course naturally have to distribute this negative to all three of these terms. And I'll notice that I have an x, whoops, I have an x squared y here, and I have a negative x squared y here. Negative times a negative is a positive, so this is just x squared y plus x squared y. That's gonna leave me with two x squared y. Bam, already can eliminate a and b. All right, so now let's look at c and d. One thing I notice about d compared to c is that d has got this third term here. Right, I'm gonna erase that. But D's got that negative six y squared and C just doesn't. So I'm gonna skip the middle part of this problem and I'm just gonna jump right to the y squareds. Anyways, here, here I see a negative um, three y squared. And then here I also see a negative three y squared. However, um, it's a negative times a negative once more. When I distribute this negative here, this turns to a plus three y squared, a positive, sorry, a positive three y squared and a negative three y squared these just cancel. Um, they're gone, they're not in the, the, the system anymore. There's, there's not, uh, this guy's not here. This is also no good um, by process of elimination, which is just a classic way of working through problems. C is the answer right off the bat 
I don't have to do anything else. Let's take a look at six. Uh, so I see this thing here. Uh, right away, uh, I should notice that this is a uh, this is a linear equation. So I'm just going to sneak in a y is equal to mx plus b uh, right off the bat. And then after that, I see words. Mmm, gross. Words. You know those things that aren't numbers? Uh, I don't want to read them, so I'm not gonna. Uh, my second piece of advice when working through the SAT is to uh, read the last sentence first when there's a lot of reading. This way it's going to tell you essentially what is going on. What is it asking for at the end of the day after all this information is said and done? What is it actually just straight up asking you for? It says based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of a, butt of a boy's height each year? Estimated uh, increase each year, that's a rate of change, man. Which of these letters represent rate of change? Uh, you got your slope right here. It's just asking what's the slope? Here's the slope, uh, and I found that. That's just A, which is three. The slope was three, that's your rate of change. That's it, move on to number seven. So, number seven, look at that, gross, yuck, move on to the next one, I'm not doing that, just kidding, how about we actually look at it a little bit more critically. My third and final piece of advice for um, finding shortcuts on the SAT, figure out what it's really asking. Try to figure out, somehow, some way, what is it really asking you to do. When you see a problem like this, it is very common to just skip it, guess, and move on to the next one. In some situations, that's an okay tactic and not a bad idea if you're um, in a rut for time. We're not, right now it's only question number seven. Uh, let's try to figure out what it's actually asking. If we look at that advice in number six, I, I told you to just read the last question, or last sentence first. Let's do the same thing here. Which of the following gives P in terms of M, R, and N? Uh, so what is this really asking you to do? Uh, let's, let's also f follow the advice I gave you in five uh, which was to read through the answers. Guys, let's read through the answers here. You'll notice every single time, P is isolated. So what is it really asking you to do? I'm gonna erase all these circles. What is it really asking you to do? Just isolate P. Get this P all by itself. That in itself isn't that bad of an idea, right? Just rearrange this thing to get P all alone. I notice that P is being multiplied by this enormous fraction. Well, I know how to undo fractions, and it's called the reciprocal. Multiply both sides by the reciprocal, flip-flop this fraction, call it a day. So what am I really looking for? What is it actually asking me to do? It's just asking me, what is the reciprocal of this nasty fraction? Well, um, certainly, not, certainly not C, certainly not D, right? Those aren't nasty enough. They're fractions, but not nasty enough. Here, I notice I have this like minus one thing on the bottom. Now this minus one thing has to be up top. Ah, here it is. That's the answer. Done and done. So you'll notice this, this problem. It, it's trying. It's trying to look like it's a ton of work. It's like, oh, oh, look at me. I'm this big macho man. No, you're not. I see through your muscles, guy. Uh, you're just a normal, what's the reciprocal problem? So if you notice here, really, I didn't show that much math for five, six, and seven. I didn't do much like sitting there, computation, step by step, and all these problems. I really just kind of found shortcuts. So just as a recap on how I worked through these problems, uh, in five, I worked off the answers. In six, I read the last sentence first and kind of cut the excess fat. And then in seven, I I determined what it was really asking for. I saw through all the, the weeds in the way and I figured out it was just secretly asking for the reciprocal. I got to the root of the problem by kind of combining both tactics I borrowed in five and six. Anyways, that is all I have for you in this video. Uh, good luck on the SAT if you're taking it this year or next or whenever you're taking it. Just good luck in general. Uh, I'm gonna continue mathing on. I hope you do the same. I'll see you in the next video.